Hey everyone. So a few of you have asked about uh, how the Jararium is going. So I thought I would give you a little bit of an update. Now, um, well, here it is. Uh, this is the new kind of build because as I mentioned in an earlier video, I had a problem where an aquarium light actually cracked the glass on the previous jar. So I actually had to take everything out and put it into this new jar. It looks pretty similar to the way it was before, but it's about, um, I think about 27 or 28 days old at this point. And as you can see, I've gotten quite a bit of growth and I'll take you through that in more detail. I'll actually start by talking about the light though, because it's kind of neat. Um, so as I mentioned before, I'm using a Philips Hue kind of setup. So uh, if you don't know what a Philips Hue is, it's like an LED light bulb that you can kind of change color, uh, but also set automatic routines for. So I've set it up so that uh, during the morning, it kind of is more sort of uh, sunrise, sunset kind of colors. And then during the day, it kind of transitions to more of a daylight kind of color. And then at night time, um, you know, it starts going, starts going a bit warmer in temperature, just so that, you know, it doesn't uh, give me too much glare. Uh, and also maybe, you know, my idea is that maybe this will, will, will simulate, uh, you know, a day night cycle for the uh, plants. Now, what I learned about plants is actually, it's not the uh, total amount of light that they receive, which is, uh, important to their growth, well, that's probably important as well, but also very important is the actual length of nighttime that they experience, because if they experience a shorter nighttime, they think it's summer and then they go into summer growth conditions. Along with that is the humidity and that sort of thing. So learning little bits here and there. Um, as we go in a bit further, and I'll just show you if I can just get the camera kind of stable. There we go. So we got some uh, HC at the front and as you can see it's actually starting to carpet quite well across the substrate that's really neat I'm very encouraged by that because it's actually sort of exploded in probably the last two weeks and I'm hoping that if I give it a, just a bit more time it will start filling in this kind of patch here which is kind of completely empty um, so I actually got some mini paleo moss, which I tried to put on, on this rock here before I had to reset the jar. And then when I reset it, it all fell off. But something I observed, you can actually see clumps of the mini paleo, I just guess here, and then just there's another patch over there. Um, I actually observed that the, the moss is still slightly growing on the rock in, in different areas. So just along the crags here, and then just at the top here, like little bits here and there. And I was trying to figure out why that was, and was it because uh, I had the moss attached there and some of the spores have remained. But the other thing I noticed, I realized the spray bottle that I've been using to spray the water has been turning green as well. And this is because when I uh, got the moss, I actually asked for the water, uh, the bag with the moss to be filled with water as well from the aquarium just so that it had some of the nutrients and some of the bacteria from the aquarium water. And I put it in this spray bottle and even though I used up all the water and refilled it one more time, found out it's actually starting to grow green a little because there is moss. I don't know if you can see it, but there's moss spores growing at the bottom of this uh, water bottle. And every single time I spray it, I'm spraying moss all over the the, the jar as well and that might be why uh, I'm, I'm still seeing a bit of moss growth here and there and I've noticed that even at the edges I don't know if you can see that but just at the edges there's this sort of green tinge to the substrate like the little substrate granules and I'm wondering if that's actually also just sort of moss growing around um, the edge so that's pretty cool now you can see that I've got the hair grass growing. Um, so I'll just turn it around so you can see that a bit better. It's growing a bit uh, a dense. Now, when I did the, the replanting, a whole bunch of the hair grass died. And as you can see, I've got all these ugly brown strands of hair grass. I'm actually gonna leave those in the tank um, because A, I think it, well, I guess it looks a bit more natural. And B, I'm hoping that as they decompose in the water, now, um, they will add uh, humic acids and sort of carbon to the water. Uh, there'll be a sort of carbon store. Um, and maybe when I get some snails, they'll actually, you know, use that for food or something like that, hopefully. So that will be a good kind of um, 
uh, uh, addition to the tank. We'll see. Once I actually uh, flood the tank with water, then we'll see what the uh, levels are like because if it starts, you know, there's a whole bunch of rotting plants and there's a whole bunch of ammonia and it's probably not great. And I just wanted to point out, you can actually see the, the root structure from, from some of these these uh, things. I'm just trying to turn this with one hand while tipping over the entire jar. So forgive me for my glacial pace here. So you can see some of the root structure, which is kind of cool. And you can actually see um, how the hair grass propagates. So um, it sends out a root under the ground and then it, like a sort of runner and then additional shoots come up from the top, which is kind of cool. Um, because I can never, what I've noticed myself doing after observing um, the way these plants grow for a while is that when I look at plants around, uh, when I'm around and about, I notice that I can now distinguish what part of the plants are actually growing and what's, um, what I think anyway, the, the plants are growing and, and um, just how their, how their growth cycle works, which is kind of really cool. As you can see, there's the temperature here. It's about 24 degrees right now in my room. And then usually when I put the glad wrap on the top, usually I put cling film on the top to uh, increase the humidity levels. And then I put a bunch of holes in the cling film because I found that if you completely kept it sealed, it would get too moist. And then um, I'd notice some uh, mold or fungus growing uh, on the plants, which was never good. So you wanna keep a very high humidity level for this sort of dry start method, um, just again to simulate summer conditions. Uh, but you don't want to go overboard with it. So uh, I'm thinking I'll give this about uh, probably about uh, two or three more weeks and hopefully we'll see a bit more of this growth in. Then I'm going to put the water in and then measure the levels and uh, just let that stabilize and then I'll maybe put some snails in like a mystery trumpet snails to go into the substrate and maybe something else to maybe eat some of this grass and then uh, measure the levels again. And then if that all looks good, then I'll maybe put some shrimp in. Um, but that is uh, the kind of one month update on the Jararium. Anyway, uh, hopefully it all goes well. See ya.